my name is Sir Jacob Tower. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. And as many of you know, I have a real interest in a condition called POTS. Um, one of the privileges of my duties is that I get to meet people who are in real need. And when they are in real need, they're desperate for help. And luckily, over a period of time, I have spent a lot of time with patients with a condition called POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. I've spoken extensively about this. Um, if you ever want to know about this condition, you'll find a lot of videos on my channel. And I've become aware of these conditions, which are invisible conditions, conditions which debilitate the patient, yet appear uh, invisible to the outsider. So the patient looks okay, but they're really struggling from within. And you know, this is an epidemic. Uh, conditions like POTS are an epidemic. And unfortunately, what tends to happen is patients go to their doctors and the doctor immediately thinks, oh, well, they look okay and they're complaining of these symptoms, so they must be anxious or they must be mad. And they'll give them some kind of dishonest euphemism, like you've got chronic fatigue or you've got even POTS. Um, and um, over a period of time, I've realized that these are patients who are not anxious, they're not mad. They're really genuine people who are finding themselves in a real difficult situation. And not only are they resilient, but their families are also very resilient. And um, today it is my great pleasure to introduce someone I've known for a while. She is the mother of one of my patients who has POTS. And Natalie has been driven to try and make a difference to patients with POTS. Uh, and so today I thought it would be good for us to chat, partly because I think it would be really interesting to hear what challenges you face as a parent. You know, because your story is perhaps something that is unheard, right? We hear the stories of the patients themselves, but what about the relatives? Um, so tell me a little bit about your story and then tell me how this has motivated you to do the remarkable thing that you've set out to do. Okay, so um, my daughter started with POTS uh, about fifth, age 15. Um, watching somebody who is very active and um, very ambitious, very outgoing, um, start to deteriorate and have to stop doing, she, was, she wanted to be on the stage, she wanted to sing and dance and used to do drama and such. Um, and, and watching her have to stop doing all the things that she wanted to do because she didn't have the energy or um, she would pass out or sometimes she would go blind or um, talk gobbledygook and we, we had no idea as a family what was going on. Um, that was really hard and we was extremely proactive as a family. So we would go to the doctors, we would, um, she had all the blood tests and unfortunately everything comes back normal. Um, so they would send her away and um, things deteriorated to a point where she ended up being bedridden more or less 90% of the time for a couple of years. So to be told everything's okay and to be sent home um, repeatedly is quite soul destroying. And I have learned through my daughter this term gaslighting, which seems to be um, quite common in young girls where they're sent away possibly because it's getting mis um, diagnosed with hormones or perhaps anxiety because some of the traits are similar so they're, they're sent away um, and knowing that you know it is actually something physical or there is something more serious going on that that is really hard as a family because you don't know when to push your child and go come on make the effort you know get up get ready um, or when you're damaging by trying to to push them that's really hard as a parent other, other parents would say to me, oh, my, my, no, my daughter never wants to get up in the morning. You know, it's a teenage thing. And I've got, no, she literally can't sit up. Um, another thing people were frequently saying to me as well was, um, um, how's your daughter, is she okay now? And I'd go, no, 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 she isn't. It's the same, it's the same problem. It's a, it's a chronic illness. Um, but you know, every time they still do it, they still do it now. And I, and I think 
That's a lack of awareness, that's a lack of understanding. Um, things she has told me about how society or how people have behaved towards her because they haven't been able to see that there's something wrong has really shocked me. Um, she's collapsed in very nice areas um, while she's been dressed up going to work and things like that. And people have literally stepped over her and to get on the bus because she was struggling to get home and she'd um, got to the bus stop and then collapsed. Um, so many things. Um, and since I have started the, the charity, and we, we haven't officially launched yet, See. but people have started reaching out to me and they're telling me stories. And it, and it is pretty horrendous um, how people are behaving. But I don't think it's because they're being mean. I think it's because they don't know. They're not aware. So if nobody's actually told them, um, are you aware of, I don't just mean POTS, I mean any sort of hidden disability. If nobody's actually sat them down and explained, well, do you know somebody could be feeling like this? Or um, they would behave differently. I'm sure they would behave differently. So I think there's a lot of education that we need to do. So, um, I mean, I, it's really interesting and in some ways, you know, very sad to hear that as a family, you've had, you've not had the support, uh, mm. certainly of the medical, medical personnel looking after your daughter, but also people around you who just sort of think it's just a thing and will just go away and sort of, you know, disappear. You obviously are a very proactive person. You're a proactive family and you decided that this would be the time where you would want to raise awareness of POTS and other hidden disabilities. So you've decided to start up a head of charity. Yeah, um, so I, I did. I decided to set up a charity. Um, I have been inspired through my daughter um, because things that she's told me and things that I see are missing. Um, support that is definitely needed, awareness that is needed. Um, there needs to be much more inclusivity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from a business sector, so I would like to see how businesses can get involved and support. Um, I know it's it's um, people like to have a purpose, and the, and they, there are some amazing people out there who are who are struggling, and um, they still want to have challenges, and they still want to do something where they feel like they've got achievements. Um, and we need to find a different way of supporting that. Um, so that's, that's one sector. Another thing is isolation. So there's massive isolation issues, which obviously are going to affect mental health. Yeah. And there's such a huge crossover with, with lots of chronic illnesses, where I think rather than just do something for POTS, let's do something that supports everybody. So the, the charity is going to be about creating awareness and, educate, and educating people. It's about bringing um, different communities together and um, having um, a support system in place, but also about doing lots of different events so we can come together. So there will be social ones, wellness ones, personal development, um, we'll have some expert advice ones. Um, so the, there'll be lots going on. Um, we're in Hull and East Georgia, that's the area that we're covering. Um, but there'll be a website, so the, the word will spread, and I'm sure as we grow and develop and people come forward, we'll see what things are needed. Um, yeah, so do you want me to tell me about the launch? I'll, I'll, I'll ask you about the launch shortly, but my question, I suppose, Natalie, is that there are some charities out there, aren't there? There, so there, is, there, there are, there's POTS UK, there, there yeah. are other charities which look at these conditions. Why not work with them? What is the unmet need here? Okay, so I intend to work with them. Mm -hmm. So I've already started reaching out um, and meeting um, lots of different charities mm -hmm. in the area. Um, and most of them, well, all of them that I've come across are, are really interested to get involved and work mm -hmm. together. So I'm not, I don't see the point of doing something that's already existing. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there, it's such a huge sector. So one in five have a disability, you all know this, and, and 70 to 80% of that is a hidden disability. So it's huge. So I'm thinking, what I've noticed is missing, or I feel is missing, 
is the physical hidden disabilities like POTS, like fibromyalgia, like ME, Crohn's and colitis, that sort of sector, I don't feel are being um, supported well enough. I think there are other sectors like, I think neurodiversity is, is getting well, you know, it's getting a lot more attention now. Um, I think um, things like um, the menopause, people are talking about mm -hmm. that now, which is fabulous, and um, suicide and things like that. There's a lot of other things going on, but the actual physical hidden mm -hmm. disabilities are kind of getting left behind. I think, I mean, if you ask me, the, I think the unmet need is that we can recognise a condition and we can recognise a person with that condition. And that's fine. But there is something to be said about the loss of identity when you have a condition like this. Mm. And I don't think that medicine does enough of that, allowing people to realign themselves with that identity that they've lost. So you can recognize the condition, a patient comes to me, I say, okay, look, you know, I think you've got this condition. That's, that's more than a lot of people do, because they just say, oh, go away, you're anxious, right? I recognize it. Um, I can even potentially treat it, but there's more to it than mm. that, isn't there? There's more to it than that. Yes. You, a person is nothing without their identity. Your child wants to be a 20-something-year-old who can socialise, who can go out and, um, and love and laugh and enjoy their life. You want to see her blossom. And there is one thing about seeing someone like me and saying, OK, well, he recognises he's, and he's trying to help. And that's a big thing. And I think, but I don't think there's enough being done about helping people regain that identity. Yeah, yeah. I I think um, it's a whole new perspective. It, it takes you down a different path. So her life isn't going to be as I expected it to mm -hmm. be because it's, there is restrictions. Um, but it doesn't mean it can't be a fulfilled, wonderful life. Sure. It's just, it's just a different path. So it is, it is making things more available mm -hmm. and um, making more um, equality. Absolutely. That's, that's what we need. Absolutely. Because, and I've noticed that there are events and things um, like going, going to see concerts or um, festivals and things and, and accessibility is so difficult mm -hmm. um, or standing for a long time. And, you know, and I'm like, it's just a, a different... Creating awareness so we can create a better, more level playing field and and still engaging and creating opportunities, but just giving a different perspective on them. And it's for not you know, it's amazing what we can do. It's just that we've just got to start with people getting together and telling us what they need. Because I don't know. I mean I'm watching my daughter and think and I can see certain things that are missing, mm. but I don't know how it feels. I don't know really what she needs. She tells me things now and again and she blows me away every time. Mm. Um, and one of the things we want to do with the charity is we want people with different um, chronic illnesses to come forward and and have some conversations where we can find out what is what is missing and what support is actually needed mm. and what will be the most beneficial. One of the things I'm trying to do, because I'm not used to the third sector, which is the charity sector, mm. I'm going to different events, I'm meeting different charities, and I'm trying to figure out what's missing and what is already in place. Mm. And if it's already in place, how do we let people know about that? Uh, because I didn't know. We didn't, we didn't know anything. Mm. You know, we, we got no support financially. We got no support emotionally. We, we didn't get anything. So that... That shouldn't be the case. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So tell me about your charity. So what is your charity called? And tell me about the launch. Okay. So the charity is called Hidden Disabilities um, because that covers everybody with hidden okay, disabilities. Very good. Um, it is Hull and East Yorkshire, but it may grow all the maybe pockets that um, might help other people think mm -hmm. of this as well. Um, the launch is going to be at um, the Doubletree Hilton in Hull. Um, it's right in the city centre, so it's close to the bus station and it's close to the, the railway station. It's about a five minute walk. Um, and there's parking really close at St Stephen's. Um, 
of the hotel have car parking as well. This is a whole, whole city centre. This is a whole city centre. Uh, the Doubletree Hilton. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, is it? it's on the 27th of October, Friday. Which is a Friday. Okay. It is. I did it as close to the POTS Awareness Day as I possibly okay. could. <laughs> when is the POTS Awareness Day? 25th, 25th okay, of October. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so we have got a, a wonderful evening um, planned. It starts at six o'clock. And I'm really trying hard to get people who have got hidden disabilities to go, especially those with POTS. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the actual event because yeah. I know people get a bit um, anxious about what to expect and what's going to be there for yeah. them and how they can handle it. Um, so I've tried to think of um, what my daughter would need and therefore what other people with the condition would need. But if there's anything else that we haven't thought of, I do want people to email me or let me know. Um, so we're starting at six o'clock. We've got welcome drinks. We've got salty welcome drinks. Oh, good. <laughs> well, salty room welcome drinks. Um, and um, there is a, a side entrance with disabled access, uh, which everybody will be using. Um, there are um, welcome drinks there. And then we've got a room where we're going to have, um, I'm calling it the HRD stall hall. And there will be lots of interactive, interesting things for people to do with different conditions and the business sector and anybody else who just wants to learn and engage. So we have got different therapists going. So lots of different types of holistic therapists so people can learn more. We've got a lady who does sand baths. Um, we've got a lady who does yoga, but she does it on the water and you don't have to paddle out yourself. She'll drag you out right. there on a paddle board and it's in a beautiful setting. We've got some really sort of different things for people to, to learn. We've got um, Salt Revive come in and they've got like a, a mobile salt pod. It's, it's a big dome which you can and you can just sit and you can sit with your feet up and you can have a blanket on you if you want to um, and that's a salt therapy. Um, we've got um, other charities who are going, uh, Mind are going. Um, we've got other um, communities in the area, um, Life Skills Hub are going to be there, um, lots and lots of different informative things. Um, we've got some arts and crafts, we've got um, some therapists, so you can come and have a little hand massage, um, lots of, just lots of things going on. And we've got products, so we've got Neo Walk, um, so people can see some funky walking sticks and try them out. We've got um, right care mobility going, but they're bringing, about, what I've asked them to do is bring some kind of cooler, more young type of products with them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm trying to get the um, sector to just think about it, because I think there's a whole section missing. They tend to do it for the elderly, and I'm yeah. like, you've got a lot of young people, um, and it's part of the identity. Yeah, you know, absolutely. What, you know, your absolutely. mobility should be cool, shouldn't they? Um, so we've got loads going on there. There are seats in the room, um, so at all the stalls, so people can sit down, they don't have to be standing around all the time. We've got hydration stations dotted about, um, and there is a couple of rooms where people um, can go if they want to go sit down and be a bit more comfortable. So there is a um, like a quiet area, um, and then we've got um, a low sensory room as well where just lay down with a blanket and you know it's darker in there and quiet and private um so after that so we've got that for like an hour could i ask you if you've got a doctor who has an interest in bots of this <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and then um so so that's our sort of activity area this is the usual thing mm -hmm. selfie stations and there will be a photographer there. there'll be a videographer there um, and uh, there'll be some businesses who are dotted around as well. Um, there's absolutely loads. There's something for everybody. And after that, we have got, um, we're going into the ballroom. So we've got, um, we're lucky that we've got a sponsor called Sparks who are making it really beautiful for us. It's like the Himalayas. Oh, wow. Yes. So it'll be, really so it'll be really calm, mm -hmm. very pretty, um, not bright, no flashing lights or anything like that. Um, so we're going to sit down, and then we've got we've got a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> and do you want to say a bit about what you're going to be doing? 
Well, I'm going to, I mean, I don't know. I, I sort of, the more I, the more I get invested in this subject, the more I sort of, the more of a sort of human being I become, you know, and I, I have to say this, I have to say that this has been an incredibly enriching experience in my life, you know, mm -hmm. dealing with your daughter and so many other people's daughters. Um, and I guess I just, you know, I'm not at all nervous about it because I think that I'm at that position where, at that place in life where everything I say for this group of patients comes straight from my heart, you know. Um, I'm just really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the fact that I can be a small part of such a great initiative. Um, I think it's incredible that you're doing it. And um, I just hope there are lots of people who can come to it because, you know, unfortunately with my workload, I don't get to meet as many people. I have long waiting lists. There are people who are struggling for, you know, for years and years. They finally get an appointment. They can't come and afford to see me privately. But the NHS is at the stage where people are waiting two years to see me. So this would be a great opportunity to meet people in a relaxed environment where, you know, once I've met you, sort of, I almost feel responsible. Do you know what I mean? So I don't mind taking that on. Um, I think it would be, I think it would be lovely to meet people. So if you're, if any of you are out there and this resonates, and I'm sure it will, because you speak totally as a parent and it comes from the heart, then it would be so good if, you know, because I'll be there and I'd love to just meet people and I'd love to listen to your stories and I'd love to in some way see if I can help. If nothing else, at least I can listen to you and meet you and that would be very enriching for me. Um, so... Um, and you're going to be telling, because there'll be people in the room who don't aren't aware of yeah. us and we want to create awareness because there's so many people undiagnosed, isn't there? Mm -hmm. So you'd be explaining the, the condition as well. Absolutely. Um, and um, and then you're going to do a Q&A. Yeah, so I'll do a So if anybody's got questions, <laughs> desperate for answers for yeah, come along, please. Say. Any questions you need, either on stage, there's a stage. There's a stage. Uh, or even, even when we're in the audience, you know, that would be great. Uh, I'd love to, yeah. And I think, I think it's particularly relevant because now, because long COVID, is amongst us and there are tons of people suffering with long COVID and I think a large proportion of them, long COVID is almost a hidden disability isn't it? I yeah. know it gets all this, uh, you know, it's it's in the news etc but really not many people are doing very much proactively for it. It's largely, you know, a lot of centres have set up these long COVID clinics but what do they actually do? And I think it's important that uh, people uh, proactively people with long COVID proactively seek out uh, doctors and medical personnel who have an interest in POTS because there's a significant overlap. Right. And, and, and I would encourage people with long COVID also uh, to come to this event because some of, you know, you never know, you may think you have long COVID, but there may be an element of POTS in yeah. there. And that bit could be treated and the patient could make those first initial steps to their to gaining, regaining the identity mm. that they've lost, yeah. which I suspect your charity will help with. So, um, so Dr. Gupta is going to be the, the first speaker. Um, and then we've got Chronically Jenny, who's going to be talking about POTS and her journey. So she's going to be doing it from a, a personal um, perspective. Um, and, and I'm going to say about the charity. So we've got about an hour where we've got um, our speakers, but rather than you sitting in a conventional sort of mm. conference style um, seating, um, we have got some um, inflatable recliner, um, inflatable like sofa chairs with poofs. We've got some blankets and um, we've got plenty of water dotted about. And um, so you can go and sit and you can watch the presentation in still in the ballroom with everybody else, but you can have your feet elevated and you can be nice and comfortable. Um, so, so I don't want people worrying about that. I don't want you getting tired out before it actually starts and missing things. So we've, we've got that set up. And anybody else who wants to stay at the table, um, there will be proofs and things so that you can put your feet up as well. You just need to let us know um, or if you're in a wheelchair so we can um, make sure we've, we've got everything set up for you. 
Um, after we've had the presentation, we're then going to have our three course um, supper, which will be really lovely. Um, and we have got a pianist who's going to be playing for oh, us. So yeah, so it will yeah, be lovely. really nice. And then after that, we have got um, we've got the whole visual choir oh. who's going to who's going to do us three um, songs. So um, if you haven't seen them, they're they're really fabulous and very emotional actually. Um, and then we've got a vocalist. So um, and she she's doing like um, R and B and. Um, uh, sort of nice chill music but then as as it goes on we'll get a bit more partyish going um but uh, we will have an area for people to dance but we're also going to have chairs set up mm -hmm. so people can go back to the the areas and put the feet up if they want they can go back into the other area where there's yeah. a quiet area there's also a rooftop bar which there's a lift to um so after we've finished with the the vocalist side of things um, we will then go into the rooftop bar and there'll be a disco in there and there's an outside bit wow. and an inside bit and there's blankets and there's hydration stations and there's plenty of poofs up there to put your feet up as well. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's a it's a really great yeah. event. You know, there's a lot going on um, and hopefully um, you'll get to meet each other and we'll see what else we can do because mm. I'm, I'm building loads and loads of events um, moving forward oh, so there'll be and I'm creating a website at the moment so there's a lot happening this is just the beginning um, and I just I, but I want to learn mm. what it is you need what mm. you need support with um, and we'll we'll try and and build that um, yeah we, we don't have anything at the moment we don't have any money we don't have any funding or yeah, anything sure. like that but people are coming forward and saying well we'll give you some blankets or you know we'll That's help really with this and and you know so the event is going it is going to be amazing um i want to do some sort of discount for people with yes yeah, this is what i was going to ask right. you because i think from what you tell me clearly this is for the patient with it the is. disabilities yeah. isn't it you've thought of everything and you've thought of it like a mother would because you're, yeah. you want your daughter to have you comfortable. So that's incredible. That's really lovely. But the question then is, uh, you know, it's going to be a trek for a lot of people to come. So that, But I guess you've created an environment where they can just come and, you know, relax. Uh, but it may, you know, a lot of patients with hidden disabilities struggle to find the money. So how do you go about uh, with that? What what can you do to make it affordable for people to attend this? I know, and this is this is really hard. If we had lots of money as a charity, mm. you know, we'd be able to um, possibly do it for nothing or be able to do it really cheap. Um, I've, I've cut the price down already, but I, I thought we could maybe do um, a voucher code that you could, you could put. Put on the end of this um so that they can get some discount okay great yeah. great yeah. so so you could that. make it very we much could, more we could uh, we could do like a 20 percent discount mm -hmm. um so which would make it 40 pound okay. and then we could also do um you know maybe some freebies for like so some of them can have some some patients who really struggle could even come and come come and attend for free yeah well that's lovely i think that's yeah. really kind yeah. I think that's really fun. I don't so, think you get anything for free these days, so it's really fun. No, fine. I know, I it's know. Really I wish fun. I could do it for everybody, but mm -hmm. you know, we, we just don't have the we don't have the funds and we've got to make it we've got to at least break even with the event. But we want people with hidden disabilities to attend, don't we? Because we that's do. how we start forming a community. At the moment a lot of the communities are largely internet based communities. You know, people know. talk to each other which is great forums, and which is good. they do that and that's yeah. fabulous but i think people need to come together make friendships where uh, you can you know a patient with pots can become friends with another patient with pots and then they can do stuff together because otherwise uh, where are those real life relationships that develop you know you're otherwise you're in you're in your home because it's it's a struggle so you're in your bed on your computer yeah. and someone else's but how about trying to bring people together and actually develop a spirit of community and empowering this community yes. to go and, and and ask for their identity back? That yeah, I think absolutely, is really important. Absolutely. So, so many people who have contacted me already have said, I'm not who, I don't recognise myself, yeah. I'm not who I was. And, 
um, and that's that is tough. Um, I don't think you lose your real self. I think no. I think what people go through does have, obviously have an impact. It creates a deeper awareness and understanding, gives you compassion. Um, but I I think the core, you know, your core personality, humour, yeah. your your goals and everything. I think it, it's still there. Yeah. You know, we just need to, um, as you say, get people out. You've got to get out and get there and, and start to, to mingle yeah. and we will look after you. There is um, toilets that are really accessible and close as well and um, if there's anything else that you're worried about, you know, um, I know there's a lady who was um, not in Hull and was worried about arriving at the train station and not being able to get there. It's, it is a five minute walk mm -hmm. um, from the train station or from Double Tree to, um, to the Triple, triple, triple Tree, sorry. Um, but if it means us arranging some volunteers to meet people and make sure they get there okay, we can mm -hmm. sort it, you know, just let us know what your problems are um, and we will we'll do our best to, to put things in place. I mean, you know, everything starts off with a small idea and you have to nurture that idea and you have to feed it and you have to let it grow and then it'll blossom and it'll actually become a tree, mm -hmm. which then provides you with the shade and the fruit that you sit under. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is really important. I cannot tell you how important it is for uh, you just to turn up, just turn up. I don't think mm. anyone's necessarily saying, oh, come and spend lots of money or give us some it's, money. It's, it's not, not about it's that. It's not that sort of it's event. Not about I, have been to another, yeah. I have been to some of the charity yeah, yeah, events yeah, where it's money, yeah, money. Yeah. It is not like that it's, at all. We will have a raffle. Um, that is it. Um, and uh, you yeah. don't have to put in if you don't want to. The other thing I wanted to say as well was, I've, I've said a black tie event mm -hmm. because I wanted people to have an excuse to get dressed yeah. up and it feels special. But what I... What I should have said um, is glam if you can, because I don't want people not coming because they don't have no, a black sure. tie. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, you just get dressed up. A few, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> but it does. Oh, that's really good. I mean, I think, I think the most important thing is it is only through your support, and your support is largely about just turning up and getting involved. That's all, that's all we're uh -huh. asking for. It is. We need patient, we need people. We need people to come and tell us their stories. We want to develop a community. And then hopefully when this community develops, then we have the opportunity for innovation, for creativity. And then we start making a small difference in our own way, yeah. in your way. Yeah. Something which, um, you know, uh, the inspiration you have gained through your daughter's struggles um, hopefully will go uh, and help someone else, which is what we all want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we have goodie bags. <laughs> and goodie bags. <laughs> I, didn't want, I didn't want everybody to know everything. I wanted uh, to do some surprises, yeah. but you know, I know um, people worry about certain things. So, yeah. Um, yeah, one of the other poxy ladies said to me, let people know, you know. So I was like, I'm yeah. letting you know. Yeah. I, 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 I'm certainly really looking forward to it. I'm certainly really looking forward to meeting people. So, you know, um, if you're searching for answers, if you haven't got your answers, you know, come and just find me in the audience. I would love to spend time with you. Um, anything else, Natalie, about your initiative? Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, no, not really. Well, <laughs> I just want I just want people to connect. Yeah, you know, I want um, if if you can. I know it's a struggle for some people um, to come along, mm -hmm. and um, if I think there's a whole sector that I've just kind of lost, you know, yeah. kind of not been seen, and we need to change that. And if we can get together, if we get people together. People will listen, people will notice, and as you say, we can create some initiatives and um, and it, we can only get better, we can just build from it and let's see what we can do. Well, you know, I, I completely get that because I think that's what medicine should be. Medicine should be about community and connection. And it's now unfortunately become about pills and guidelines and protocols and stuff like that. And unless you have that connection, unless you have that community, 
it's very difficult, you know, uh, and so I'm delighted you're doing this. Thank you so much. I'm grateful that you've invited me and I very much look forward to it. Oh, we're, we're so delighted. <laughs> we're so delighted you're coming. There is something else that we, we've been finding out about as well, isn't there? But I'm not sure how much to say on that yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you should because I think one of the things that I have been a real advocate for is uh, trying anything. You know, I don't think we should be waiting for um, protocols to be developed, guidelines to be developed. I think um, the problem is with some of these conditions, you know, I think we have to be courageous enough to step outside the box for the sake of the patient. And one of the things that I've found that has helped many of my patients, the patients who have not gotten better with just lifestyle changes, with medications, etc., sometimes intravenous saline has helped them. Uh, and, you know, I appreciate that there's no real data out there to support its use, but we have patients out there who are struggling, and every day is important. I don't want to miss, I don't want anyone to miss even a single day of their lives. You know, your daughter, I don't want her to miss a single day. I don't want her to come back in, you know, 10 years and then we have some research study that says, give her this. You know, I want these 10 years are important. These 10 years are important for you. They're important for your daughter and they should be important for me. And therefore, one of the things that uh, many of my patients have found to be helpful anecdotally is that intravenous saline seems to help many patients. And the nice thing about something like this is that if you get it, uh, you notice a benefit. And if you notice a benefit and it's not causing you any harm, then what's the harm in continuing? Anyway, this has been a very difficult thing to source uh, because uh, the NHS is very protocol bound. We are managed by um, doctors who are very fixed in their views. And in some ways, I think that deprives a very needy community. Uh, but I spoke to you and I said, how does one make something like this available? How do, do we do it? Do we do some research in-house? Do we create the data? How do we do it? And you've really taken that on and you're uh, looking at all ways by which something like this could be trialed, could be um, made available to people at a cost-effective price, which then allows them to access it and hopefully get some improvement. You know, I'm not suggesting that this is a destination. I'm suggesting that this could be a bridge to a destination. It allows that patient just to perk up enough to realize that they can get better. And if they can get better, then you have empowered them. And mm -hmm. that is so important. So yeah. tell me what you're doing with that. Um, so we have found a, a, a clinic in... Um in hope that is interested in doing the um, saline solutions okay. and uh, we're, we're still um, collaborating with them and um, with yourself and we're, we're going to see just check like the protocols and things mm. that we put something in place so it's safe for everybody yeah. and um, the clinic what they want to do this won't be done through the charity this will be done through the clinic mm. but what they what they're really wanting to do is to get groups of people together so that they can do it um, at a really cost-effective way to oh, keep the to keep the price right down, and their clinic is absolutely beautiful as well. So it should be a nice, you know, kind of a nice treatment mm -hmm. to go and do because it takes quite a while, while to have the saline solutions, doesn't it? So um, that is something that um, the the clinic are actually going to be at the event as well, and um, so you'll be able to meet them. But uh, it's we're just yeah dotting the i's and crossing the t's at the moment, and but I don't think it'll take long to sort oh, out. I'm so uh, that that I am so excited about. I'm yeah. so excited about that because I think I think there is a real need for us to be proactive to help our patients. So I'm so delighted. So again, if you want to know about this, uh, then um, come along. It'd be lovely to chat to you. Um, and you know, somewhere together, we can do something different, something new for the community. You know, together we can be pioneers in, in moving understanding of this condition, treatment of this condition forwards. Yeah. So, um, so how, how do we do the discount thing then? Well, you, do you have a code? I can, what? Well, Say the code. You can say you... the code if you like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll make one up now then. Okay, so it will be um, HID um, 2023 POTS. HID 2023 POTS. Yes. 
So what do they do now? So if someone's watching this and they okay. say, look, I want to join, I want to come, mm -hmm. uh, what do they do? Will, will you have the link on the bottom of this? I could try it. Yeah. I'm not very good if at not, it. If um, not, it's on Eventbrite or if you go on the Hidden Disabilities um, social media platforms um, and it will have the event link, Eventbrite link on it. And then um, when you click on it and you book your tickets, you put in the HID code. Um, we will do, um, I will offer six free places. So there will be six that are available for people with pots um, for the first come first served. And then after that, well, the code will be like a 20% discount. So the tickets will be 40 pound and you get your welcome drink and you get your three course meal and entertainment and you get to meet Dr. Gupta <laughs> and, and everything else. And that's kind of doing it right at cost uh, just to, to be able to get you to go there. So. Wow. Wonderful. 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 Okay. Thank you so much. Um, it's the 27th of 27th October. Of October. 27th of October. Thank Friday. you so much. I am so excited. And I think this uh, is there, a... There is, a, there is a discount code for the hotel as well. Oh, if so. Um, if but that, will be on, that will be when you book onto the um, Eventbrite link, mm -hmm. there will be a discount code for the hotel if you want to stay over. And there's, so that's at the Double Tree. And then there's the Holiday Inn as well, which is... Um, a, a, more cost effective hotel depending right. on which type that you want. <laughs> Great, wonderful. So, um, is the, are they offering a discount as well? Um, I'm going to, I'll give them a ring actually, Lovely. but they're, they're not expensive to stay there. Great. Okay. Great, wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, you're very welcome. Thank you. Hope you can come. <laughs> Take care.